Hey folks, welcome back. We're gonna do a shakedown of the box spot. Before we do that, I wanna show you my kit pack from Firebox. It is amazing. Amazing in that it is just the right size. I would say that this is the Goldilocks size for any Firebox enthusiast. It's not too large and it's not too small, just the right size for storing your Firebox cook kits. Now this kit pack has several storage compartments. You've got a large compartment in the front, the main compartment, and then you do have this compartment in the back, specially made for your plates, cutting board, as such. The front pack has enough space to carry quite a bit of items. So I do have my breakdown utility kit, gas burner, I do have some seasoning, chopsticks, lighter, spoon, and fork. The nice part about this front compartment is that it's gusseted. The gussets allow you to keep this open but not have any fear of anything falling out. Just like that, amazing. The main compartment is large. Large enough for me to carry a canister. And as you can see, the scout stove and my box pot with ample room for other things like food or other utensils that you want to bring with you. Now for today's cook, we're going to be using the Firebox Scout and also the new box pot. So I can tell you right now, the idea and the concept of the box pot is amazing. It fits well with the uh, Firebox stoves. On the top here, I have the lid for the box pot. I'm gonna gently slide this out. You can see the Scout stove. This is the box pot. And inside it, I also have the baking stone. Now inside the scout stove, I'm able to store lots of things for this cook. I'm gonna have two eggs. I do have some vacuum sealed rice, which we're gonna have. And also I do have my protein. And we'll talk about this here in a second. What I'm gonna be making today is gonna to be Filipino breakfast called Tosi Log. It's going to have multiple steps. Okay, let's go ahead and get this all set up. So what I've seen is a lot of people having great success using the stone, the baking stone in cooking, cooking or making rice. But it gets a little messy, right? So one of the things that I've come up with to aid in making this truly a one pot wonder is gonna be the use of parchment paper. After you see this cook, you might change your mind about parchment paper, using parchment paper. So I've got different sizes. I've got shorts, short ones, and I've got two distinctly short ones um, that I'm gonna use here. One is gonna be short enough so that it maintains the height or it's perfectly fit for the height when using the baking stone. So this is, the, this is gonna be the one we're gonna to use today. Uh, for for the rice for the rice cook and then we'll go from there again it's you know if you followed my videos you'll you would have seen how I made these let me know in the comments if you want me to do a, a video on how I fold these or make these parchment liners I know it's boring But, you know, I love, I love to cook and I love to eat. But one thing I hate doing is having to clean up after, you know. Especially if you're out camping or doing something like that and you finally get done with your meal and you're all rested and you're thinking to yourself, ugh, I gotta, I gotta clean this all up. This makes it a lot easier. If you spend enough time just to prepare, it works out really well. So there you go. This is what it looks like. 
Now I can easily slide this inside here. And you can see it's a perfect fit, even on the edges. That way I can still actually place my lid on top without it being affected. So it's a perfect size, perfect fit. Again, if you want me to make a, uh, a video showing how to make these different parchment papers, specifically for the box spot and the setup, just let me know in the comments. And there she is. So we'll go ahead and uh, put our rice in. I'm pretty sure that I measured this at half a cup when I when I vacuum sealed it. But just to be on the safe side, let me just make sure and size it up real quick. From what I can tell, I did measure this for half a cup. So this is going to be half a cup of rice. The last one I did, that full cup was just way too much rice. So so this should be enough. There she goes. Again, I do have the baking stone at the bottom. I'm still using the baking stone. This is jasmine rice, so it's going to be a two to one ratio. Uh, two measurements of water to one measurement of rice. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm going to swish that around a bit just to make sure that everything stays nice and flat. I do have my lid. It's so convenient having this, this kit pack right in my lap while I'm cooking. You know, everything's so compact. It's, it's right there for you. It's great. Go ahead and turn this on. You can probably hear that. Should be good. You know what? I don't think I'm going to need... I don't think I'm going to need this... I really don't think I'm going to need this this diffuser plate, so I'm just going to go ahead and take it out. I'm going to kind of, I'm going to kind of maneuver this and flip this off here. And we'll go ahead and put the uh, top back on, and we'll come back in about 15 minutes. You can definitely tell it's boiling. You can see the steam coming out. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn this down and let it simmer. All right, so it's been about 15, roughly about close to 15 minutes now. So we should be getting pretty close to being done. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead. Let's go ahead and take a little peek at this. And that looks amazing to me right there. Let's see if all, all the water is boiled out. <sighs> Looks like it. So what I can do now, I can just go ahead and stir it up. There still has, still looks like there's quite a bit of moisture inside there, which is fine. So what we can do is just basically take this off the heat right now and just let it sit there and let the uh, baking stone, the, the residual heat in the baking stone, we can use that to finish it off and take it all away. But as you can see, the parchment paper held up just fine, which is great. Go ahead and turn this off. And we'll just go ahead and let it rest for a few minutes. It's been a few minutes, so now we can go ahead and transfer it into something that we typically don't use, which is this little guy. I'm not, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the uh, with the Scout, but but you do have a base that comes with the Scout, which is useful. But there's always been a fear of using these for for any type of cooking because of the seams. Now, because we're using parchment paper, all we're going to do is lift it up deposit it inside here, and now we can use this as a plate, essentially. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's pinch the sides, just like that, and hopefully it lifts up. Just like that. And it looks like the parchment paper got a little bit burnt, but we're okay. Now we can go ahead and deposit that inside there. 
And we can actually just close it up a bit until we're ready. But we'll go ahead and put that to the side because the next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and take out this baking stone because we're gonna have to cook the eggs. Okay. So now you can see there's a bit of steam inside there, but for all, for all intents and purposes, it's pretty much clean. We've cooked rice and the box pot is still clean. That to me is one of the best things. <laughs> okay, so for this cook, what I'm gonna use is, is a shorter one. So this one should just be enough for the eggs And it should not go beyond this, this height. Now, the reason why I made this one shorter is because you can now actually use it inside or it's the height of this pot, which is the base or the cover of the scout. Fits perfectly inside here too. So I'm just gonna go ahead and unfold this and get this ready. So as you can see, it's a, it's a lot shorter, but it's just enough to hold the eggs. Got a little bit of veg oil, vegetable oil. It's gonna hold, it's gonna put that in the bottom, roll it around a bit, gonna help the eggs from not sticking. So just like with parchment paper, you gotta make sure that you put the stuff inside there, you know, before you start it. If not, the parchment paper is gonna burn. So what I'm gonna do now, before I even light it, I'm gonna go ahead and put in my eggs. There we go. There's one and two. There we go, that looks perfect. Since we don't have the baking stone on underneath for the eggs, it's gonna, it's gonna come up temp pretty quick. So I don't want too high of a heat. Just a nice medium to low heat will be fine. So I'll go ahead and drop a little bit of water inside here just to get steamed. All right, so while this is going, I'm gonna go ahead and dress up this rice just a little tiny bit. Now I do apologize if this shot's gonna get blown out because of the, uh, the sunlight and the white color, but as you can tell, it looks really good. What I'm gonna add to this rice is uh, Montreal steak seasoning. Now, the reason why I use Montreal is because it's got black pepper, it's got red pepper, it's got all kinds of good stuff inside here that, that'll really help with the flavoring of that rice, including dried garlic, which is gonna be amazing. So what I found is that the, the flame is just a little bit too intense for the parchment paper and the steel, so it's starting to burn it just a little tiny bit. I don't know if you can see that. So to kind of stop that from happening, I just went ahead and put on the uh, diffuser plate back on. So we'll use the diffuser plate. Again, this is the first time I'm testing this, so you live and you learn. So the diffuser plate's back on. All right, it looks like these eggs are done. I don't know if you can see it, but it's cooked just enough. We don't want to cook it too much, but just enough. We'll go ahead and kill the heat on this. Now, what we need to do is take these eggs and put it on top of the rice we made. Just put it upside down, use that as a table. See it burnt a little bit. Definitely, definitely use the diffuser plate when you're using the box pot. It's a must. I think the uh, direct flame is just too much so I'll slide my egg underneath here, just like that. And I'll go ahead and lift it up. Now what I can do is slide this egg right on top of my rice, which is a perfect fit. Look at that, perfect fit. Take this off, I don't know. I think it might be a good idea to, to, use, the, uh, to use this when you're, when you're cooking anything, even eggs, with the box pot. That way you can really tone down the heat that's hitting on the bottom. I guess this uh, the stainless steel is very conductive. So it might be really a good idea to make sure that you use this even when you're cooking eggs. So the last thing that I'm gonna add on to this is gonna be our protein. 
Now this is where this comes in. This is this is marinated pork. It is called tocino. Now with this one, I'm going to use again another parchment paper. This one is going to be a little bit taller. This one's going to actually fit into the box pot without the stone so it's going to be a lot taller so we'll see how that works and there we go that way it's tall enough that any splat or anything else will we'll go ahead and make sure and keep that nice and clean okay again diffuser plate i can't stress enough diffuser plate when when you're using it with the parchment paper that heat is just way too much just gonna go ahead and throw this in for now now we can get it inside there I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit of water. There we go. All right, so for all intensive purposes, it looks like our tocino is nice and cooked, so we're pretty much done. Let's go ahead and add some, some more seasoning to the eggs, just a little bit. Then we'll put our tocino on top. There you go. This is uh, my version of the uh, Filipino tosilog breakfast. Let's dig in. So we'll go ahead and crack into the egg first. Look at that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Take a little bit of meat. Some of this egg. I think I may have cooked the egg a little bit too long, but oh yeah, oh yeah, this is good. This tocino is just amazing. You know, it's salty and sweet. It's definitely, definitely different from eating bacon and hash browns for breakfast. But this right here is where it's at. Mm -mm -mm. Egg was definitely cooked a little bit too much. If I do it again, I'll definitely cook the eggs with the uh, bacon stone on the underneath. And also with the diffuser plate. Let's see how much food we can put on the spoon. This is amazing. All right, folks. I think I'm done. the last of this. Mm -mm -mm. That was delicious. The box pot, A plus. With the parchment paper, A plus plus. If you're gonna use it with a gas burner, make sure you use a diffuser plate. Always start low, then you can go high. A must is this guy right here. This will save you and will save your cooks. If you're gonna be using the, uh, the parchment paper, paper technique, just make sure you use this on top of the uh, diffuser plate and you'll be just fine. Now, the best part of all this is gonna be the, uh, the cleanup. See, we got burned a little bit, but still, it, held, it still held together. Even though it burned, it held together just fine. Again, lift it up. Pretty clean. Just need to uh, wipe that off on the inside, and we're good to go. All right, folks, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and smash that like button. And if you enjoy content like this, go ahead and consider subscribing. Once again, thanks for watching, and have a great burn.